Hello, Joshua. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Can you see me? Is my camera on? No. Yes, your camera is on. Let me try to reach a little. So we'll just wait for a bit for more people to join us and then we'll start. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, Ali. I can hear you. Hi, um, hi Ali. Oh, hi, hi. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, so I just saw your message on LinkedIn now. Um, but are you able to speak? Yes, I'm able to speak. Yes. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so currently Aliu is in Dubai for the COP28 um, conference, so he may not have as much time as he would like to spend with us, considering he's really busy. Um, so I would want us to just run through this real quick. 
um, while others join us as we progress. So hi, Ali, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm very fine and thank you for having me, Agatha. Good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you as well. I'm actually jealous because I'm supposed to be in Dubai, not you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> how is it going over there? Yeah, um, interesting, uh, stressful, so I'd say a blend of uh, nice and not so nice. Oh, wow. Wow. But can you hear us? I can see people passing behind. Can you hear us well? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Awesome, awesome. So I'm going to give a little introduction um, to who Aliu is, and then I'm going to pass the mic to him so that we can run through this real quick. Um, Aliu is the founder and CEO of EcoCycle. Aliu is also a climate activist. Um, he has many years experience in developing circular solutions around waste management, climate change, and all of that. I don't want to be the one to do this. I think you'll be able to introduce yourself better. Um, so over to you, Ali. Can you just tell us what you do? Um, how long you've been doing it for? All right. Thank you so much, Agatha. Um, I think you've said everything. But uh, just to add, I would say uh, my organization is focused on providing uh, uh, waste management solution as well as uh, yeah. uh, and uh, I've been operating for about four years now working with young people that can drive on climate action the farm. Um, and our focus is really driving. Am I the only one that cannot hear you well? You should project so that I can hear. Yeah, um, can you hear me better? Awesome. Awesome. Can you hear me better? Yeah, yeah, it's a little better. Okay, okay. So basically, that's uh, what we do at EcoCycle. Uh, young people uh, providing uh, empowerment around the solving environmental problems, uh, uh, unemployment, and also uh, promoting green economy. Thank you so much for it. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, Ali. If you don't mind, I'd like you to take that again because I'm sure I'm not the only one that lost you for a bit there. And um, a few people couldn't hear you. Do you mind taking that again? Okay. Yeah. So I said, you, you already said a lot. Um, just to yeah. add, uh, my organization is focused on providing a resource management solution uh, to address environmental problems and also uh, the climate action. And we do this through um, youth empowerment, women empowerment, to be able to create solutions to um, solve problems uh, related to the environment. Uh, I was actually about uh, four years old, and uh, our focus has been on impact working with communities to um, reduce waste, uh, making interlock, making briquettes, making agricultural, um, uh, agricultural waste briquettes, uh, making buildings from plastic waste, all of that. So this is what we do. Okay, so you're breaking a bit. Um, I think Joy is saying she cannot hear you clearly. Um, what can we do about this sound issue now? What can we do about it? Um, Joshua, what do you suggest? Okay. All right, I suggest that um, that is actually coming from his end. Um, I think if you can, if you can help us, um, um just talk a little bit louder. If you can help us talk a little bit louder, that would be better. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, this is very much better, sir. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I just need my earpiece. All right, that's fine. Okay, so, right. um, yeah. So if I got you well, you said you've been doing this for four years, right? Awesome. Can you just walk us through how you got into the waste management space? We're going to get into the climate change aspects um, in a bit, but I'm really interested in how you got into the waste management space. What was the inspiration? How did you get there? There are so many things you could be doing, right? Why waste management? Yeah, um, so, um, my intersection is, uh, uh, which is the why, I would say, of um, why, why the whole, you know, action where the whole drive has to do with three intersections and one of it is um, trying to create jobs out of um, solving problems um, this is due to the huge unemployment um, in nigeria especially affecting young people young graduates and i thought this is really 
a huge problem. Secondly, um, I see, uh, I saw that there was little, you know, innovation around um, waste management, and uh, uh, you could the waste sector is highly um, linked to climate and um, greenhouse gas emissions, and uh, in a way to address the problems of waste that affects or contributes to greenhouse gas emissions while trying to reduce uh, unemployment by creating jobs um, inspired what um, we call as EcoCycle today. And um, so my team is composed of young people whom are, um, I just want to go find if you can hear me. Okay, yes, sorry. we can hear you. We can hear you. We can hear you, but it's not clear enough. You can increase the volume a bit. Okay, my apologies. I'm trying to increase the volume now. Okay, so I might have to speak very close to the um, speaker. So just to confirm if you can hear me now. We can hear you, sir. Okay. So um, the persisting unemployment, um, as well as the issue of... Um, um, low innovation in the waste sector, which is a huge problem contributing to about 9% of greenhouse gas emissions um, that doesn't just affect the climate, but also contributes to pollution, contributes to affecting public health. This was a strong reason when we felt, let's think of something innovative, let's come up with solutions. And um, all of our years of uh, practice has been around coming up with innovation solutions. And I think what we first started to do was um, building, um, creating uh, interlocks from plastic waste. We did a lot of research on that. And um, we started to train young people around that as well as um, uh, with the focus on trying to reduce this waste pollution and um, empowering young people to be able to be um, problem um, solvers and solution provided in their, in their communities. And then um, going up, we um, focus also around um, the uh, other kinds of waste uh, around agricultural waste and also organic household waste, um, helping communities who do not have access to waste management services. Um, recently, we launched the smart mobile bin to improve waste collection and improving earnings and income for um, out of, or let me say, um, you two are not in school or in the waste sector. So um, again, some other innovations we've done are like trying to reduce open defecation in schools by building toilets um, for you know, plastic bottles. And all of this has been around um, promoting circular economy, reducing emissions in the, in the climate um, uh, angle, and also trying to foster a green economy. And um, so that's it, yeah. Thank you. Uh, over to you, Agatha. Thank you so much, Aliu. I think that's as extensive as it gets. So thank you for that expose. Um, when did you know it was a good time to start EcoCircle? You've said a lot about how what you're doing is impacting your communities. Um, your EcoCycle is one of your missions is to create jobs through solving problems. Um, you're also looking at how to cut down on emissions, climate change and all of that. When did you discover that, okay, I have this dream. This is something I want to pursue. This is something I want to work on. Um, when did you decide or when did you know it was a good time to start? Okay, okay, yeah. So um, immediately I was done with school. Um, I, I started to volunteer for um, an NGO that was focused on climate change and, and food security. And um, before I went for my youth service club, I started to think of what um, problem, there are lots of problems in my head. I, I, I always think of how to solve problems. And um, so I began to think of where am I going to focus on because um, I really have this interest in solving problems. And again, looking at the persistent issues of unemployment, I really didn't want to see myself sitting down to say, I want to you know, wait until I get a job to start working. I want to create solutions and create jobs. And that was really just the drive. And I think immediately, um, during my service, I, that was when I registered EcoCycle, and that's how I started. We started with no, no, not like we got a big grant to start anything huge, but I feel like um, a strong team has has been really, really supportive towards driving um, 
vision and solutions and I, 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 I look forward to us coming up with much more solutions that can create jobs and um, help foster um, a sustainable and climate smart environment. Thank you so much, Aliyu. I think for the young people on this call, that would be very, very encouraging for them. Um, you said you started immediately, even during your NYC, if I got that right, and then you've been at it for like four years now. So that's really encouraging. Um, so I, I've, I've been speaking with a lot of people in the climate change space, waste management space, um, people that run NGOs, people that are actually doing development work, um, maybe not as an NGO, but as a business. And one of the things that they've complained about is the difficulty in working um, working in this kind of um, space, the Nigerian space, if you get what I mean. Um, so what are the challenges you faced, the ones you're facing and what you faced when you started EcoCycle? Do you want to share that with us and how you were able to overcome those challenges? Okay, um, so challenges will always be there. They are always there. And one of the major challenges was uh, yeah, resources because you want to solve problems. You need you need resources. You need resources to even have an establishment. You need resources to make to do projects. So all of that has were, were really key. And um, I think my major um, uh, a way that helped us was really to um, to, to to think big, but just just do what we can do. What, like start small. So we tried to utilize every little resources we had and try to like think out of the box on how to raise funds individually, personally, and then, so that brought about our waste, um, community waste management services. And then we um, we started to like help households that didn't have access to waste management services to, you know, provide services. And I think we, started, we had about um, 15 houses. We were running on a huge loss because we had to like still pay for coverage of other things. Um, but I think it was a strong, uh, a frustration that necessarily might just have made us to just you know, stop but I think we just said let's keep doing and let's see how we can motivate more households and and so, so I think currently we have about um, 130 houses and um, so that has been sustainable and uh, we've been able to now we, we oh, since before now we've been able to now utilize some of the you know earnings from this to drive some of our also solutions our innovation um, you know, so, so it, it was now a system that was sustainable for us to just you know keep doing keep trying and um yeah that's it and then we are driven uh, as a social entrepreneur uh ownership angle that uh, we are able to make solutions that can generate some profits and these profits are put into um impacts you know work and also so again this the team uh, i think a very strong team that um, really are focused on you know the vision rather than what they would get um financially so um it's not about how much do we get how much do we spend it's about how much do we get how what do we invest it in you know what solutions are we coming up with next and what are we uh, how can we make impacts? So that basically has been the major um, uh, challenge, but I think this was a bit um, of a way we navigated through. Okay, thank you so much, Aliu. If I got that right, I'm just going to do a little recap. Um, you said you've been able to get people who are interested in the vision especially in the early stages um, between year one and year five those are the early stages of a business and it's important to get people who are invested in your vision more than the monetary um, reward people that want to see the vision actually come to fruition and you're able to get that um, you also said you were able to see how one arm of the business could generate money to fund the other arm of the business that wasn't making so much money right um, because i spoke with an entrepreneur a few days back and one of his frustration was that um it was in the development space but it wasn't funding 
um, the business wasn't self-generating, so he had to be pulling resources from here into there, and then he just got frustrated and left it. Um, so what would you advise um, entrepreneurs in the development space generally? I don't want to limit it to waste management who are frustrated because their solution is not bringing anything yet, and it's not looking like it will bring anytime soon. What would you advise um, that kind of entrepreneur to do next? Okay, yeah. So um I think it's um I think any entrepreneur, though I'm more of a social entrepreneur, um who is focused more on impact rather than profits, but I think most entrepreneurs will tell you um it's not easy to be an entrepreneur. So I also say as a yeah, what my dream? What is your problem? Uh, it's not easy. Um, the only thing that can keep you sustainable is to is your passion to lead your path. If your passion leads your path, um, so irrespective of whether you're making money, you're not making money, you would keep doing it and keep improving and doing it. And I think the greatest asset you can ever have is is experience. So when you keep doing something, you keep learning, you keep building experience, and you know you keep shaping your thoughts. So from rubbish, you you get to create something that is that is meaningful. Um. So the goal should really be on the impact rather than the profit. And um, uh, secondly, always have like a stabilizing source. So yeah, stabilizing source in the sense that um, you you have something that just keeps the business sustainable. You know, you're pumping something from somewhere in any way possible uh, until it begins to stand by itself. Else, you might just get frustrated with the whole, ah, I need to eat, or I need to, you know, pay bills. Ah, this thing is not giving me money. Let me go and just do another thing, and then that's the end of it. But um, I think anything that you think that you hope to just yield results, then you need to nurture it, you need to give it, um, you need to water it, you need to nurture it, you need to grow it. So just have that in mind, and I think, yeah, that's just... Um, way to go okay so focus on impact as opposed to profits especially in the early days of your business um so i hope everyone is keeping that in mind um i would like to ask um what are the kind of partnerships you've entered into that have been very very beneficial to EcoCycle in terms of um funding in terms of resources um can you share that with us Ali? Oh, okay. So, uh, uh, partnership has been really, really key. You know, when you have, um, um, I think that's like a very solid way to go. Um, and we've had a lot of partnership that has really helped us in doing a in scaling through project that you know we never thought it was possible, and um, we didn't have the, the money to do that. And so, constructive partnership, um, like when we're doing the toilet project, building toilets using plastic bottles in schools to reduce open defecation. Um, we did that, I think I would say from, from an award grant we got and, um, rather than just, you know, focusing on spilling the money and eating it and, oh yeah, it's a grant. We are free to eat it. It was like an award, but, you know, we choose to put it into another impact work. And I think it was, it still wasn't enough. We had to now get some partnership support and that was really really helpful because we had partnership through you know the, the pets gathering we had partnership through some other things and that assisted a lot another partnership has been like um the, the plan game the environmental action card game we recently developed it get every young person to understand climate action and get to be part of it understanding environmental problems and solutions to it and um it was an idea that you know became a reality but then i think we needed pull it off and make it work and we i think that we had some partnership that made that work and that that is really one another successful partnership yeah we've done a lot of other partnerships look local, organizing local trainings uh women empowerment and stuff and that has really scaled up to i think about ten thousand people um across yeah the country thank you aliu thank you um so before we get to the point where people can ask questions, I'd like to find out what would you advise people that are finding it hard to get valuable partnerships for their businesses? Um, so they know they want to do something in the social entrepreneurship space, um, but they are finding it hard to scale because partnership has been difficult. How would you advise them to go about this? What would you advise me to them?
Yeah, um, so partnerships can be can be crazy sometimes. Some partnership can be toxic. Some partnership can be annoying. Um, we've done projects where we've had partners who wants to hijack your, your, your effort. And perhaps maybe they just put 10% of effort or even 5%. And so one thing is I would say, just know who you're partnering with. Um, you should do your research well to get to know who they are, people who have worked with them, what experience do they have. And I think the best way to build partnership is to first build personal relationship that, you know, these people, um, you have some level of personal relationship in a way. It, it reduces the shit to what you can get. Um, but, 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 you know, when you just run after big organizations because you want to have their logo, um, eventually they might swallow you. <laughs> Sorry about that to say that. But then that's the truth. So whether big or whether small, um, the best for small organizations like mine, you go with um, small partnerships. If you need big organizations, really look out. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. We lost you for a bit. My apologies. Uh, my 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 system shut down, so I had to just take the phone. Sorry, it's so rough. Uh, everything is just so crazy over here. My apologies. Yeah. So um, I say it's it's really good to look out for which organizations you're partnering with, and then most importantly, try to always have an MOU, a memorandum of understanding that gets to what is their jurisdiction what is your jurisdiction so you don't get to cross one another and i think it's best to always discuss things that you're not clear about to be sure to always like discuss everything and then so you don't get to be shocked when this organization does what you are never expecting and if they do this then it's something that you guys are agreed on anything beyond that then it's up your so i think those are just the ways to go about you know public partnerships and stuff, but partnership is really the way to go, um, especially if uh, you're a small organization that doesn't have money and wants to grow, you need, you need, you need partnerships. Thank you so much, Aliu. So make sure you have a memorandum of understanding. That's what an MOU is. And then you can't do without partnerships if you're a small organization looking to grow. So it's a must, must. It's not a, it's not a should I or should I not. It's absolutely necessary. So you just have to make sure that you know what you're getting into before signing anything or going to any partnership with any organization, any person looking to invest into what you're doing. Um, Ali, before we give the floor to others to ask their questions, what do you imagine or envision is the future of waste management in Nigeria? I'm bringing it down home because a lot of us on this call are Nigerians and um, this is our business landscape. If you're going to be doing anything, it's, it's going to be within the Nigerian space. Um, so what do you imagine is the future of waste management in Nigeria? And please, if you can tie it to climate change and climate activism, um, that would be great as well. Okay, so um, like I said earlier, um, the waste sector is really, really critical um, if you're talking about reducing emissions or combating climate change because 9% um, of emissions in Nigeria's NDC or Nigeria's waste sector contributing to 9% of um, emissions, methane, and methane comes from landfills where you have um, the composition of waste. Um, it's really, really high and it's critical. So when you're trying to reduce emissions in, the, in, the, in addressing climate change, it means sustainable waste management becomes very critical. And this has been reflected where you had the nationally determined contribution um, uh, without waste, but eventually after being reviewed, waste is has been included um, as pathways towards reducing uh, emissions. And all other policy documents uh, be developed or being developed uh, in angle of climate change have waste um, 
reduction, recycling, all of it as uh, solutions to, to addressing climate change. So you cannot under, undermine the capacity of um, addressing waste solution, waste uh, management, uh, waste issues. The future of um, waste, uh, we would always continue to have increasing waste. Where there is life, there is waste. Whatever you do, you generate waste. And um, the waste increases based on our per capita income. So when you have analysis of people, communities with um, high income, you have more waste being generated over there than communities with low income. Communities with low income try to manage everything they have because they don't have much. They don't buy much. They don't consume much. But communities with high, um, high per capita income, they get to buy much, they spend much, they consume much, you know? So you have a lot of waste. So what am I trying to say? The more economy in improves, the more population grows, the more um, the years come by, you have more waste. And the question is, what is of this waste? Currently, we have about uh, 2 million tons of waste generated annually in Nigeria. And um, this is already a problem. So imagine in the, in the next 10, 15, 20 years, how many tons are we going to be having? Um, it's a problem, but the only way we cannot stop waste, we can reduce waste, but waste can never end. The only way forward is to like utilize waste, turn waste to resources, turn waste to values, reduce consum um, address consumption patterns, reduce um, uh, excessive consumption, sustainable consumption promotion. These are the only ways that you can now, the little other ways that is remaining that cannot be utilized or recycled or consumed or reduce through sustainable consumption, you can now have sustainable uh, practices such as um, uh, waste to energy initiatives, waste to fertilizer initiatives, and so many other waste, waste to briquette initiative. All of these um, can add value to the waste. At the end of the day, the, the list of the list of the list of waste that you cannot do anything with it, um, I think those should be the ones going to landfills. So this is the future of waste we all have a role to play through addressing our consumption patterns and um, again more organizations more social enterprise like ecocycle need to come up to keep thinking of ways this is a huge problem that nobody in the world is able to have a permanent solution to so it means there's a huge gap that everyone can come in to think of what can i do what can i add and maybe one day we could just have a a sustainable waste system that nobody is scared about waste as a problem that could affect health or affect the climate. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aliyu. Um, like you said, the waste management problem in Nigeria, and I dare say Africa, is not being addressed as it should in the capacity with which we should address it. So thank you so much, everyone. If you're on this call and you've been wondering, is this something I want to get into? How do I volunteer or how do I lend my resources to this? Please do so. Like you said, we are currently producing and generating 32 million tons of waste annually in Nigeria. And we don't have enough resources recycling this waste. They are all ending up in the landfills, which is harmful. The ones not ending up in our landfills are ending up in our streets, um, clogging drainages, flooding. It's, in fact, the problems are innumerable. So thank you so much, Ali. So you are in you are at COP28. This is a personal question for me. It's not for the other people on the call. Um, how is it going so far? What have you learned so far? What conversations are being had right now? Um, where are we with the um, commitments that were made last year? Um, what kind of conversation? What's the tone? What's the feel in Dubai right Hello. now? How's it going? <laughs> So um, yeah, COP has been has been going on so far. Um, a lot of uh, mixed feelings and um, a lot of expectations too. Uh, in terms of progress, I would say um, I'm sure you've heard about it. The first day there was the um, operationalization of the loss and damage bonds, and you had commitments. Countries who have made pledges, I think about um, 400 about, uh, above million a uh, billion dollars but um, that's commitment on paper but that's um, that shows progress but i think um the um mixed feeling another angle that uh, people are a bit um, worried about is the angle of the adapt the adaptation the uh, the mitigation you know reducing the opening up of new fossil fuel wells and stuff like that so all of that are less talked about and uh, you know uh, people are like we, we you can't use loss and damage funds to 
deviate the conversation to continue polluting. So, so this is like, and we look forward to things unfolding more in the coming days. And this is just the first week of COP. And um, it has been good. A lot of um, conversations ongoing, events, partnership buildings, networking. Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, Aliyu. I know this was a very, very tight call for you. Um, you had previously mm. mentioned that you'll be engaged in doing stuff, um, but you still made time in your schedule to be present for this. Um, myself and the rest of the team have been looking forward to this for a really, really long time. So we appreciate you making the time for it. Um, before I ask the few other questions I have, I want to open the floor for people who want to ask you a question or two. Um, so if you have any questions you want to ask Aliyu, now is the time. Um, you can type it or you can raise your hand so that um, it will take them. Do we have any questions? Anyone? Okay, Adamu. Um, hi, Adamu. You can unmute your mic if you're in a quiet place. Um, yes. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Agata. Uh, good evening, everyone. And good evening to Ms. Aliyu. Thank you very much for the wonderful presentation. Honestly speaking, I've learned a lot. I'm looking forward to what's this day, to this wonderful presentation and discussion. And I can tell I've gained a lot. But please, I do have a few questions to ask. Um, so I, let's say I have two questions, because those questions are very important to me. So I want to ask, um, as a young social entrepreneur who is um, having the talk of engaging into recycling of waste products, you understand, waste management products, please, what are those legal factors one should be considering or look out for? Because this is very, very important. You know, Nigerian economy and stuff like that. I think there are legal factors one needs to consider. Please, what are those legal factors that one needs to be considering or look out for before venturing into it or while engaging in it? And the second question I have is, um, please, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Loud and clear. Now, the second question I have here is, um, so is there any platform available that encourages younger social entrepreneurs into cycling of weight in Nigeria? Please, if there is any, please, I would love to, you know, get engaged, get to know, please, because it's very, very important. Thank you very much for that. Um. I think your your um, voice was breaking. Can you just summarize the question, uh, the first and second? Yeah, Adamo, your network is really bad, and your voice was breaking. I could barely hear anything you were saying. So if you can try again, if it's bad, you can just type in your question, and I'll read it out. Is that all right? Okay, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, please. Uh, my question, the first question, accent is i think as a young social entrepreneur who is you no know, having thought of engaging into recycling of waste products please what are those legal factors what should be considering or look out for um, I mean, can you hear him? Is he any better? I don't think he's any yeah, better. No, I can't hear him. I can't hear him. Okay. Adamu, please type your question in the chat box. I'll read it out. Okay, no problem. I'll do that. Yeah, your Thank network you. is really bad, so we can't hear you well. You can type your question and I'll read it out for you. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. Um, I think that day your hand is up. Um, do you want to go ahead if your network is good? Yeah, good evening. Hi. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Good evening, Ms. Agatha. Well, my question is very simple. I want to ask if there is uh, any I... initiatives within Nigeria now that actually help people like upcoming social entrepreneurs like us, uh, like a fund we can tap into because I'm actually concerned more about my even my immediate uh, society or com should I say community environment. Because I'm from Oyo State, Ebadon precisely, and the way I see waste around the place, I don't even mind doing it for free for now. Then, on the long run, started making money out of it. That's my question, sir. Okay, so if you're talking about initiative, um. I would say uh, the best thing is to um, look out for organizations within your location and maybe volunteer. 
um, that's the, the, the best way to go. And then uh, you can now begin to identify areas that you're passionate about. And um, then you can build or something. But I think the best thing is to acquire skills and um, how to go about, you know, things. But you need to have the passion and you need to be patient enough to, to, to learn. Yeah. Thank you, Aliyu. So Ali has communicated to me that his system has died and his phone is about to die as well. Apparently, there's no light in Dubai. <laughs> I'm going to I'm putting that to you. Yes. <laughs> so um, we'd like to round this up. If you have any questions, you can always send it to us by email. We've been sending the links, uh, messages to you all, and then we can communicate it to him. And then whatever feedback he gives us, we can always relate it back to you. Um, Ali, do you have any final words for us? Any word of encouragement for inspiring social entrepreneurs on this call? How can we find you? Okay, yeah, so um, I'm telling you this because I also try to tell myself this, um, that uh, there are a lot of opportunities and um, you can be that change. You can be part of that change. So um, have a focus, um, build networks around your focus, keep learning um, to build your capacity and don't be afraid to make the move. Yeah, so thank you so much. Thank you, Aliyu. Thank you so much. Just so we don't have a case where your phone dies on us, um, we're going to have to let you go. But you didn't mention where we can find you, your handles, your business. Um, how can we find you? If we want to volunteer with your organization, where do we go to look for you? All right, www.ecocycle.com. I think he just typed that in. Um, so you can visit EcoCycle's website to see um, what they're doing. If you want to reach out to Ali, you can send him an email on info at ecocycle.com. Um, thank you so much, Ali. Thank you, everyone who has joined this call. Uh, Adamu said he asked two questions. Ali, can your battery take this? I, I don't know. Okay, okay, you can ask. Okay, so let me just read it out. He said, as a young social entrepreneur who is having the thought of engaging into recycling of waste products, please, what are those legal factors one should be considering or look out for? That means regulatory factors, legal factors. Um, okay, so if I get your question, regulatory framework? Um, so he said, what are those legal factors one should be considering if you want to go into the recycling business? Okay, okay. So um, I think for, for me, I would say, I wouldn't say I'm directly recycling. Um, I call it innovative waste management solutions. Um, so the, the, the basic recycling is the buying of plastics and selling and then you know um for, for, for we we try to think of what what can we do out of the, the, the box of you know so um if you're thinking about that one that you buy plastics and sell plastics and you know uh, basically is you have a registration and then the state um, agency you work with you try to register with them and um i think those are, are, are the major um legal things you need to do the cac and then the state agency you try to register um for a start because another thing is the truth is you say you want to make all the registration you end up making a lot of investments and it's it's that alone can even drain you down maybe perhaps when you begin to build grow you can join other organization associations like the recycling association of nigeria you know um, some of them you pay dues and dues, but basically for the legal one um these two are, are sufficient enough but for solutions innovations i think once you have your cac you are you're you are okay to keep making solutions and keep making impacts yeah i think what you said is very important um at some point you just have to start building right just start what you want to start um as resources are coming in trust me you're not the cac's problem right now your business is not big enough for cac to come after you right now so start building when you see that you're onto something 
um, you can now say, okay, we want to register this business. How can we go about registering this NGO? Perhaps it's not a business. And then you can also consult. I'm sure you have friends that are lawyers. This is what I want to do. What could be a legal problem in the future? And you can start knocking them off one by one. Please don't do everything at once. That's the biggest mistake you make because you'll be sinking funds into something that's not coming that is not bringing funds in right now. So take it slowly, do the most basic when it comes to um, regulatory compliance. And then you can start sorting the rest as time goes on. And um, finally, there's one more question for you. Forgive us, Aliu. Let me just read that, the last question. Um, is Someone is asking if there are any waste management initiatives within Abuja. Is your organization in Abuja or in Nasarawa? I'm not sure. You're muted. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Um, so someone is asking if there are any waste management initiatives in Abuja. So I want to confirm, is your organization in Abuja or in Nasarawa? Perhaps they want to volunteer, volunteer with the organization. Yeah, start with, start with yeah. we are in Nasarawa okay. State. Um, okay. But in terms of our empowerment and um, outreach, we operate Abuja and Nasarawa. So if... Uh, um, there are programs we are doing, and it has to do with uh, trainings. I think for Abuja, you can always um, volunteer to be part of it. Uh, other organizations, there are a lot of organizations in Abuja that are doing that. Um, you can go check for organizations like Ecobata, um, yeah. uh, Chandra Dati, amongst others. A lot of them, so you could try to, if you really want to uh, volunteer for them, then you could send them an email. Um, yeah, and also if you want to join for some of our trainings, and um, you can always <laughs> keep us in touch, and uh, we will we'll, we'll engage you when, once we are doing training. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aliu. We appreciate your time. Thank you. I think I want to let you go now so you can focus on the stuff you have going on for you right there. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Aliu, we really appreciate your time and we'll be in talks. Um, this video was recorded. This um, webinar was recorded. So everyone is going to get a link to the recording. Um, you can just go back on it and listen. If you couldn't follow through from the beginning, you can listen to everything we've discussed on here. Uh, I'm pretty sure our organization and yours will have so many more partnerships to do in the future um, but for now we wish you good luck um, all the best in at COP28 please gather all the knowledge so that you can come and point to us um, thank you everyone for joining have a very good rest of the day um, we'll see you alright bye so everyone bye. thank you Aliu bye thank you. bye, bye. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. Thank you, Ali. Bye. So we have like okay. this, but this one is the one. We have the only muscle. It's only muscle. All those ones are from Bo